This is Eyewitness News Up Close with Diana Williams. Two well-known local politicians duking it out for a spot in Washington. This morning, a conversation with Charles Barron and Hakeem Jeffries about their campaign to represent Brooklyn in Congress. Good morning and welcome to Up Close. I'm Diana Williams. We continue with our series of interviews this morning, taking a closer look at congressional races in New York's upcoming primary. This morning, the Democratic candidates who are vying to succeed Brooklyn Congressman Adolphus Towns. The veteran Democrat decided to retire after 30 years in office, leaving his seat wide open. New York's 8th Congressional District, like many districts, was altered by redistricting. It now includes Fort Greene, Bed-Stuy, East New York, and Coney Island. Joining us this morning are the candidates in the Democratic primary for District 8. They are New York State Assemblyman Hakeem Jeffries and New York City Councilman Charles Barron. Gentlemen, good to have you here with us this morning. Good morning, good to nice see you. Nice to see you both again. Let's good begin with jobs because, you know, the jobs report came out last week and it was weaker than expected, not good. Um, talk about uh, if you, either of you were in Congress, what would you do um, to create jobs and specifically jobs in District 8 and in, in your area specifically. Hakeem, let's start, start with you. Well, you know, it's often been said that when Wall Street catches a cold, our community gets a fever. And when Wall Street collapsed in 2008, you know, uh, with feverish conditions, our community's really been suffering from economic pneumonia. In many communities, Bedford-Stuyvesant, Brownsville, East New York, Flatlands, Canarsie, uh, one of the things that I think we're going to have to do in terms of a national program, uh, which I look forward to being a part of, uh, is infrastructure repair and development moving toward a green economy. When you talk about something like infrastructure, though, give me a specific. Well, we've got, you know, an MTA system here in New York City that's in a dramatic state of disrepair. One of the things that will be important in terms of uh, congressional representation down in Washington is to make sure that we can fight for a fairer share of mass transportation resources that come back home so we can rebuild the crumbling system uh, that exists in many parts of the congressional district as well as in New York City. Okay, Charles, what See, about when jobs we say a national jobs program, we talk about infrastructure, we have to be specific. We're talking about bridges, we're talking about roads. Look at the roads in East New York and Brownsville and the 8th Congressional District. There's money for transportation and the Transportation Committee, the Appropriations Committee, to do that. Manufacturing jobs are leaving. We have manufacturing districts in the 8th Congressional District, but no, manuf no manufacturing jobs. You know, what we need to do is when we say infrastructure, because those are the things all the politicians say, when we say manufacturing jobs, those are the things all the politicians say. I think this could happen. Let me just say this okay. real quick. Major Owens and I are working on a $1 billion plan for New York State that will bring jobs in the health field, the green economy, green jobs, and then what they always say to our neighborhoods, we don't have capacity. We don't have capacity. Well, build something in the jobs program that will build capacity so that we can rehire. We got Okay. 20, when, when, 30 million Americans out of work. One idea that, to create jobs was bringing Walmart in. You and I have had no, that discussion yeah, before about Walmart. Walmart doesn't you, create jobs. You, you don't know think. That. Do you, I, where did no, you stand Walmart, on? Okay. Walmart, well, Walmart loses jobs. Okay. We lose three you jobs out of every You to having Walmart come to right, East New York because it's a job felt loss. it was a job loss. What do you say about Yeah, Walmart's Walmart? not appropriate for the East New York community right you now. You disagree with it, too. Uh, absolutely. And when you think about the fact that we've got to strengthen the small businesses that exist right now, and if we're going to bring in a megastore, we should bring in a megastore that provides good quality jobs, that takes care of their workers. Walmart has a history of doing the exact opposite. Right. Now, I think that uh, with respect to the jobs crisis that we have in the 8th Congressional District, there are probably more public housing residents in this congressional district than almost any other congressional district in the entire country. Many of those public housing residents are suffering from high rates of unemployment, unacceptable rates of unemployment in a city like New York, which is the greatest city in the world, some of the richest people in the world, but folks in East New York, Bedford, Stuyvesant, Canarsie, Coney Island, who are struggling. There's a Section 3 uh, st statute that was put on the books in 1968 that requires 
the New York City Public Housing Authority to spend 30 percent of any money that they receive from the federal government in creating employment opportunities for local public housing residents and the surrounding community. Yet for the last 40 years, we've seen no meaningful evidence at the federal level and at NYCHA that this Section 3 requirement has been enforced. And whoever has this seat next uh, has got to make sure that there will be a strong, forceful but attitude to bring employment opportunities. Beyond Section 3, the federal money for NYCHA public housing has been cut tremendously. So even if you look at the capital budget for Section 3 projects, it's about $275 million in NYCHA's capital budget. They're not even using that for new construction. They're using that for repairs. So if you don't have the money in there to create any new construction like you've sent us, NYCHA has a lot of concerns about crimes. Do you know it only costs okay. 20 million dollars to build a youth center, hire the youth to build it, and hire them to manage it, and you can get some youth jobs that mm -hmm. will really help our situation in our neighborhoods. Okay. Now, can I, I want to keep, well, I wanna keep okay. moving this because I want to get as many topics in as possible. So moving from jobs now to something else that was in the news this last week, and that was the Defense, Defense of Marriage Act, which could possibly be overturned. So I want to know where you both stand on same-sex marriage. In particular, how do you define marriage? And, and Mr. Baron, let's turn I define marriage, marriage between a man and woman. I believe that 50 percent of the nation is for same-sex marriage, 50 percent is against. I think that we should not allow that to divide our communities. I respect those who want to get married in our New York State they pass same-sex marriage so everybody can get married go ahead and I just think that for those of us who feel that we are against same-sex marriage that should be respected those who are for it respect it go ahead and get married there are issues in our community that are far greater and devastating to our people you know we're looking at the poverty the crime and these are the issues mm -hmm. that when See, I go around the eighth that's what I hear. But I hear people talking about poverty. But you don't see same-sex marriage as a civil rights issue? No, when you mention civil rights, you know what happened to us in the civil rights movement? We were lynched. We were murdered. We were raped. We were tarred, feathered. You know, when you compare that, I have concerns about that because civil rights movement, the suffering that we've gone through, and then when you make marriage that issue, people can go ahead and do that. I think they should go ahead and get married and be fine, but I'm not going to compare it to lynching, hanging on the racism that still permeates every institution I think some in the in gay America. community would say, you know, I'm they've sure suffered they, a great deal. I, yeah, I, I, I want to know no what, your thoughts, what your thoughts are on same-sex well, marriage, and, and also your thoughts on, on what Mr. Barron just said here. Well, I, I supported <coughs> marriage equality uh, in New York State, and I support the president's position uh, that the opportunity to marry on the civil side of marriage uh, should be available to people regardless of what their sexual orientation may be. The reality is that when you look at the question of marriage, you've got the religious institution of marriage. I grew up, was raised in the Cornerstone Baptist Church. It's very important to me, and that has to be respected. And there was a robust religious exemption clause that was placed in the marriage equality bill that we passed in New York State to respect the religious institution of marriage, but you also have the civil institution of marriage, uh, and I don't believe, and I believe that How many of my colleagues. How did you vote on the same-sex bill? I voted in support of it. In support of it, okay. Absolutely. Okay. Because I don't believe that on the civil side, as it relates to the institution of marriage, that we as a state can make a distinction based on race or gender or sexual orientation yeah, but, 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 or but, but, religion. I, I want to clarify but, but, how you define same, right. how, do you, how do you define marriage, rather? How do you, how do you define marriage? Well. Marriage is between two loving uh, individuals who okay. decide that they want to commit themselves uh, to a union that will involve a variety of different rights, responsibilities, Six. and privileges that is conferred by the state. Okay. It can also so be blessed by a religion or religious practice, but we're talking about the civil institution of marriage okay. and that license that is conferred by the okay, state. Okay, so I want to clarify, on DOMA, would you vote to in Congress to overturn it or no? And, and you would say no to overturning right. it, right? Well, you know, I don't think the federal government should impose itself on a state or on a nation. So you know what I'm trying to get at? I don't support same-sex marriage. Leave me alone. Okay. I should not be, you should not impose your values on me, and I don't want to impose my values on you. And you would say? Oh, I would absolutely vote to repeal, repeal. the Defense of Marriage Act, <clears throat> and me, because I think the reality is that we've seen people on the radical right, and they're going to try and do it to President Obama, have used wedge social issues to try and distract 
from the broader economic reality yeah, the that their policies, that their right. policies, the <clears throat> folks on the radical right, have largely been driven by protecting the wealthy and the well-off to the detriment of working families to the poor, senior citizens, middle class, and others. But They've sometimes, been successful in doing I that in 2004, we, uh, we, we and we can't we allow them to do it again. We capitulate okay. too much to the right. We get reactionary to the right, and we can actually lose some of our values. So I think that we okay. should say, be strong on what you stand for and say, I don't want to impose this on the state, but nor will I allow the state to impose values on me. And sometimes okay. it can't be just reactionary to the right. Okay. You've got to assert who you are Charles, and what you're about. Okay, I've got to take a quick break here. Okay. We're going to take a break. We're going to continue the discussion. We'll be back talking with Hakeem Jeffries, Charles Barron, Democratic candidates for the race for New York's 8th Congressional District right after this.